Getting dumped usually isn't easy. There's hurt, feelings of inadequacy, frustration. When you get left on, a feeling that things are just out of your control. How about when they leave you for someone else? Don't you think you'd feel like you just weren't enough? These feelings are encapsulated by Akane Kinoshita, a second year university student and our protagonist. The anime starts off with an aesthetic tea stirring at a cafe, and in the first 14 seconds, we get a guy saying, I'm sorry Akane, I met a girl I like. And you see side eyes of regret coming off of Akane's now ex-boyfriend. You can feel the shame. He doesn't want to look at her and see the potential pain he's caused as he's dumping her. Akane immediately thinks, well, I did think he'd been acting cold lately. The cafe becomes dark in her mind, and then we cut to the opening theme. Just an absolute banger intro in the first 37 seconds. Or, well, attention grabbing. For anyone who's been in Akane's shoes, I definitely wouldn't call the situation a banger. Akane heads home and her university friend Momo opens with, You lost your boyfriend to a girl from an online game? How interesting. What's up with that? Kind of like to Momo, this situation is silly and comical, while Akane is clearly sad sitting on her bed in the fetal position, teary-eyed. Akane then starts to reminisce about the time her ex got her into the main MMO they played, the same game her ex found a new girl in, Forest of Savior, and this game is the main one referenced throughout the anime. He even has the audacity to ask her for the in-game equipment back he lent her. Now if I got dumped like that, I wouldn't be responding to my ex over anything. Like okay, you're leaving me for another guy? Alright, I'm keeping the gear, it is what it is, but she's more reasonable, replying, oh, okay. Akane boots up her computer, pulls up her coffee mug to take a sip and thinks, it's not like I'm going to die because I got dumped. Life's going to go on. And as she finally logs into the game, she says he's already unfriended her and expresses irritation and regret. I wish I hadn't bought all these items if we were going to break up. She then proceeds to take her now feelings of frustration out on mobs and FOS. While raging out, she's interrupted by another player who Akane remembers as her guildmate, named Yamada. She decides to greet Yamada, who responds back to her in a disinterested tone. Not being the one to give up, Akane tries to extend the conversation by revealing her breakup story. However, in response, Yamada tells Akane to leave the hunting ground if she's not interested in the game. Fury takes over Akane as she realizes she's had it with him, and she decides to lash out on Yamada. After typing out all the hateful things to Yamada, Akane receives an announcement alert from Forest of Savior, informing her about a gaming event. Seeing the announcement, Akane has an emotional relapse over her ex, remembering the time he said, let's be together forever, and then when he dumped her and said the new girl said that she liked him too. Knowing that her ex, Takuma, would be taking his new girlfriend to the event, she decides she's going to show up in hopes of making her ex regret dumping her. After dolling herself up, Akane finds herself mesmerized by the amount of gamers present in the event, when all of a sudden, she spots Takuma. As her ex and the girl walk away, Akane chases after them and bumps into some guy, some very important guy whose name is in the title of the anime. This is like an embarrassing scene for her. Thoughts of, how stupid is this? I want to disappear, and I think I'm about to cry, flood her mind. In this scene, the author makes a reference to Cinderella here. Of course, the scene transition is beautiful, but I also think about what it represents as well. A princess found and being rescued by her prince. A true prince charming. The tall, blue-eyed Yamada-kun, who she immediately thinks is super hot. She tries to play off falling and losing her shoe, and mentions she was going through a hard time, but then gets the, I'm not interested reply from Yamada. He answers not as if he's giving sass or being snarky, but instead that he's just unaware of how to respond to something like this. Basically, Yamada doesn't say much, but he's socially inept as well. She immediately recognizes him from their online interaction and calls him out by character name, which happens to be his real name. We then get interrupted by Akane's ex who calls out to Yamada. It's then revealed that Yamada is a locally famous FPS gamer. When Akane finds this out, she tries to front and pose as Yamada's girlfriend, show off and whatnot. Yamada denies this at first, but then Akane bribes Yamada with a code for the FOS rare item he was looking for in their first interaction. Then Takuma starts to have this meltdown about how he's been following Yamada for three years and that he's never gotten a DM reply from Yamada. Meanwhile, shocked to know that his role model is associated with Akane, Takuma falls to the ground and 
and cries bitterly. Just when Akane thinks she's won the battle, she sees Takuma being consoled by his new girlfriend. We then move from this scene to a restaurant where Akane is once again depressed, saying she won the battle but lost the war. All because regardless of her flex of having Yamada pretending to be her boyfriend, she at the end of the day is not dating him, and her ex is getting loved on and consoled by another woman. Yamada asks if he can go home and Akane breaks down further, tearing up at the thoughts of her ex and his new girl. They kind of go back and forth about Yamada being a paid pro gamer, that he's never had a girlfriend, until eventually Akane decides to go to the bathroom. She comes back to an empty table, thinking she had been ditched by Yamada, and we get this beautiful and sad inner monologue about how she's feeling, from now on, I'm going to be alone. We then hear Yamada say, are you okay? And get a teary-eyed Akane once again, and then feelings of relief that he's still here, and he had brought band-aids to patch up her scraped knee. Like even this moment is so heartfelt and touching, he was thinking of her, and this is what Akane wanted all along, just someone to care and think of her, and even better that it's a hot guy. It's at this point we transition to Akane waking up into a bed that's not hers, but instead Yamada's. Yamada pauses his game and informs Akane about her shenanigans, revealing how she got drunk and dozed off in the restaurant, and also puked herself. Embarrassed beyond belief, Akane quickly apologizes to Yamada, who simply tells her to get out. After getting back home, Akane washes off the remains of last night and suddenly realizes that she doesn't have her necklace. Logging back into Force of Savior, she tries to contact Yamada in hopes of asking about the necklace, but instead runs into another player named Ruhihime. As it turns out, the necklace was given to her by Takuma. Devastated by losing the necklace, Akane tells her story to Ruhihime when Yamada logs in. As Akane asks Yamada about her necklace, he tells her that he hasn't found it at his place. Bummed to hear that, Akane observes Yamada's conversation with Ruhihime. He tells her about how the inventory is always brimming with trash. Ruhihime tries to reason with Yamada, telling him that a player could have brought in the inventory, deeming it as useful, but Yamada continues to berate the items. Then Akane slowly raises her hand and reveals that she's the one who brought the noob loot. They have a small spat that embarrasses Akane enough for her to log out. The spat is over the fact that Akane fills the guild storage with useless items because she wants to help newbies and Yamada cleans out the storage all the time because the items are horrendously useless and that even a newbie would know better. But he says, try to be more selective because there's only so much storage. Later, in Akane's dreams, she's still haunted by relapse. A desire for her ex to say he was wrong and he wants her back. But we all know things would never be the same. And then, we end the dream in a burst of her ex's new girlfriend saying Takuma's name. We transition to Akane post-nightmare having lunch with Momo, who slaps Akane with the hard truths. Momo wants to hear about the hot gamer nerd Yamada. Akane's, however, depressed over the necklace she lost, and then Momo hits her with a, what do you want with a gift from the guy who jilted you? You're still not over him? I guess that's how you always are, scheduling things around him. You started playing online games which you had zero interest in, just for him. Like damn, Momo is a straight savage, and straight hit Akane with, you're codependent, you did everything and carried the relationship for a guy who didn't love you as much as you loved him. After the pep talk, Akane heads to the subway where she witnesses a group of high schoolers confessing to none other than Yamada. As he turns the girls down, Akane stops him and apologizes to him for barfing at his place. They walk off in the same direction and he mentions he wanted to see her again, but not for the romantic purposes she's probably thinking. Yamada reveals he had broken the heart necklace and you get these moving next few scenes where you never see Akane's face, but you know she's sad. She utters the words, the heart is in two pieces. While never seeing her face, you see her try to brush off the sadness so Yamada doesn't see, but we know and we know he knows. She then says, thanks for going to all this trouble. Trouble. So, you've been carrying it around all this time? She laughs, but there's a sadness to it that's palpable. She's still trying to brush off her feelings of hurt, but isn't very good at it. Oh, I should have logged in. That must have been a hassle. As they get out of the train station and into the outside where it's raining, she just says, thank you. I was planning to toss it out anyway, so don't worry about it. And finally, you see her face where she fakes a smile and tries to walk off into the rain. But Yamada runs out to her and gives her an umbrella and says, you don't have to give it back. Then we move to Akane laying in bed with the broken necklace and her reflecting on the umbrella event with Yamada. Through a small scene where she has to clean her room out because her mom shipped all of Akane's stuff out of her house, Momo confronts her with the two symbolic items, the broken necklace from her ex and the umbrella she received from Yamada. 
Momo says the umbrella is new, so you'll still be using it, right? And this necklace is broken, so can I throw it away? Already leaning into the symbolism of moving on to Yamada. And then we get to the flashback of what Yamada said earlier. Try to be more selective because there's only so much storage. And this really resonates with Akane. And she learns a valuable lesson. She says, I can't hold on to everything that's precious to me. And she actually chooses to keep a teddy bear her grandma gave to her. And you get a small scene of her basically giving up her memories of her ex. Then we get this beautiful transition of beer where Momo decides to treat her out. Later, we get Akane and Momo intoxicated, giving Yamada's umbrella back to him in the dead of night. Aside from a goofy drunk Momo hitting on Yamada, we get a genuinely heartfelt thank you from Akane to Yamada, so appreciative to him for being there for her. He himself thinks of when he saw her crying at the dinner table the night of the FOS event and then brings up that their guild master, Ruri, who was worried that Akane hadn't logged into FOS in a while, and turns his face away while suggesting they should all play again sometime. As Akane finds herself in a group date with Momo, she realizes that she's not ready to move on and decides to go home. Momo complains to her about transforming into a dusty gamer girl, since she was on her phone throughout the entire mixer. Akane then informs her that she was talking to Ruri and shows Momo her avatar. Observing the cute bunny girl avatar, Momo tells Akane to consider the possibility of Rurihime being a catfish and secretly a fat old guy. Ignoring Momo, Akane logs into the game and finds Rurihime and Yamada alone. Rurihime tells tells Yamada how she misses spending time with him and recalls the time when it was just the two of them. Suddenly, Akane finds her head filled with thoughts regarding Rurihime and Yamada's relationship. The next day, Akane continues to obsess over Yamada's relationship when the guy from her group date stops to chat her up. With Yamada occupying her mind, Akane completely ignores this guy. All of a sudden, she spots Yamada with a gothic bunny lolly girl at the subway station. Seeing the mysterious girl who Akane thinks might be Rurihime clinging to him, she gets upset and runs off. Arriving back home, she receives a text from Rurihime requesting a meetup. As Akane jumps on the opportunity, she dresses herself up and heads out to meet Rurihime and her guildmates. On the way to the cafe, she actually gets lost. She then bumps into a pretty important FOS nerd who walks her to the cafe. And after this nerdy but handsome dude stops his rant about FOS, they get flagged down by Rurihime. Akane then spots Yamada and runs over to him. Just like how I wish you'd run your finger over to hit that subscribe button and also like this video. Did you guys know that 0% of you are subscribed? That means if you want even more anime recap content, I need your help. On this channel, I plan to cover anime, manga, and manhwa all in the shoujo genre, so I'd appreciate a subscription and also a hello in the comments. Thank you. We then get a flashback to when Yamada was taking care of Akane after the FOS one year event. Yamada gets away from his computer to check on her and she wakes up and starts crying into him. Thinking that Yamada is her ex, and telling him to go because he doesn't like her anymore while clinging on to him. What I love most is we finally start to get Yamada's inner thoughts. He thinks, clinging while telling me go? Isn't that a contradiction? Seems that way to me, but probably not what I think. I'm clueless. But if I move now, I have a feeling she'll cry harder. She's been crying non-stop. How miserable can she be? This thing called romance, it's rough, isn't it? You can sleep in peace till morning. With the group settled in the cafe featuring Forest of Savior, Akane finds herself completely lost upon seeing all the members of the guild. She turns to the presumed Rurihime who looks at her with cold eyes. Akane asks her about the friendly old man and the boy radiating golden retriever energy. The girl coldly reveals that the old man goes by the name Kamota Takezo and the boy with glasses is her big brother, Eita Sasaki. With those words, she clarifies that her gamer tag isn't Rurihime, bluntly expressing her lack of recognition towards Akane. Noticing the slightly intense environment, Yamada tells Ada to start the introductions before proceeding on. With that, Ada discloses himself as Rurihime, leaving Akane utterly bamboozled. She quickly assigns him the label of Nekama, a term reserved for boys adopting female personas online. However, Eita strictly tells the group that he isn't a Nekama and starts babbling about how he's one with Rurihime, his alter ego. Realizing that no one ordered a Yappuccino, the old man tells Eita to calm down and takes charge of introducing himself, and the angry chibi, Eita's younger sister, Runa. 
With introductions over, Akane realizes quickly that Runa hates her guts for some reason. Knowing that there's no way Yamada is dating Ada, Akane happily tells him how she thought he and Ruhime were a thing. Yamada then reveals that Ada is actually his senior, and he has to let him do as he pleases in game. Upon hearing that, Akane tells Yamada that she's glad. This strikes a nerve in Runa, who bluntly asks if Akane is in love with Yamada. As things start to heat up, Yamada excuses himself to go outside. Wanting to check up on his friend, Ada asks Yamada if he's fine. Yamada reveals that he thought Akane wanted him to disappear. This makes Ada facepalm mentally as he remembers how oblivious Yamada is to the feelings of girls. After the group meet, Ada bids everyone goodbye and apologizes to Akane for not being able to walk her home. In the meantime, Runa stares at Akane coldly. If looks could kill, Akane would be long dead. Runa then reveals to Kamota that she hates Akane, and with that, she makes it her life mission to kick Akane out of the guild. While riding the subway with Yamada, Akane finds herself in an awkward state after running out of things to say. She then looks around and finds everyone bedazzled by Yamada's handsome face. After arriving at her spot, Akane learns that Yamada lives alone and only eats junk from the convenience store. This prompts her to rush home and whip up a delicious curry for Yamada. During their conversation, Akane gets a call from Runa who apologizes to her for being mean. She informs her that she'd like to meet on Saturday to get to know Akane better. After ending the call, Akane expresses her happiness over receiving a call from Runa. Once Saturday approaches, Yamada receives a call from Ada, wondering if he's still up for tutoring Runa. This surprises Yamada as he recalls Runa asking Akane to meet her on Saturday. Shrugging it off as bad memory, Yamada informs Ada that he'll be at his place shortly. In the meantime, Akane finds herself in an awkward situation, as sitting before her is not Runa, but a strange man who has convinced himself that she's Ruhime. Suddenly, Akane receives a text from Runa notifying her of the inability to make it. In a follow-up message, Runa informs Akane that she's arranging for an online friend to take her place. Taken aback by the text, Akane excuses herself from the creep in the suit and rushes to the ladies' room. As Yamada makes his way to the Sasaki residence, he asks Runa if she had plans. Just as Runa's about to deny, Yamada sees Akane calling Runa. In the end, Runa reveals that she asked a rabid fan of Rurihime to meet Akane through her brother's phone. Realizing just how dangerous this is, Yamada turns to leave when Ada arrives. In the meantime, Akane's troubles go from 1 to 10 as the creep in the suit begs her to open the bathroom door. Once Ada finds out the truth, he calls Kamota to bring his van so they can reach Akane. During the ride, Ada tells Runa that it's because of this very reason that nobody likes her. Slapped with reality, Runa tells Ada that she doesn't care since she has plenty of online simps. As the group arrives at the location, they find Akane seated beside the crazy suited guy. Upon approaching the table, Yamada inquires about the bandage wrapped around her leg. Before Akane could answer, the creep reveals that it was all his fault. As it turns out, the guy, convinced that Akane had fainted in the bathroom, rushed to the stall to offer her some pain relief medicine. However, caught off guard by his sudden appearance, Akane's reaction resulted with her accidentally hitting her leg against the toilet seat. With Akane fine, Ada sternly grabs Runa's arm and tells her that she's going to receive a stern lecture. However, before Ada could punish her, Akane saves her by telling Ada and the boys to get her some medicine because her stomach hurts. Expecting an ear full from Akane, Runa patiently waits, but to her surprise, Akane asks her to play F West with her sometime. Taken aback by the request, Runa angrily tells Akane that she purposely sent a weirdo to scare her away. As Runa expresses her hate for Akane, Akane calmly tells her that the reason why she came to meet with her today was because she wanted to befriend her. Caught off guard by Akane's kindness, Runa starts to cry. She apologizes to her for being so mean. As the boys return, they find Akane consoling the crying girl. Being the apple of her family's eyes, Runa had gotten used to the princess treatment and as a result developed a rather spoiled attitude towards unfamiliar people. Since she tends to come off as cold, the girls in her class often avoided her and addressed her by last name only. But of course, since boys don't really care about personality, they all secretly have a crush on Runa. For Runa, the case is entirely different as she prefers handsome men like her brother and of course Yamada. However, recently, Runa has started opening her icy cold heart to Akane. While she knows they aren't friends on equal footing since Akane is older than her, Runa tries her best. Uh best from her end at least. Since Runa is used to all the coddling, she finds herself often sulking when Akane doesn't treat her like a kitten that is starving for attention. But despite it all, one thing is for certain, Runa is taking a liking to Akane. One day, Akane invites both Momo and Runa for a girl's day at her apartment. 
While Kane is engrossed in FOS, Momo yaps about wanting to get married. However, knowing that to get married, one needs a husband, Momo bitterly expresses how she doesn't even have a boyfriend yet. To make matters worse, she finds her best friend completely nerding it out with a middle schooler. As Momo begs Akane to go on a group date with her, Akane tells Momo to give online gaming a chance and invites her to watch as she hunts. Then all of a sudden, Akane's laptop ends up crashing down, just like her love life. Upon returning home, Runa tells Eita about the mishap. Eita then calls Yamada and asks him to help Akane with her computer. So the next day, Runa brings Yamada to Akane's apartment. As Yamada tells Akane that he has come to fix up her computer, Akane stares at Yamada like he's the Jesus for broken PCs. After letting the two in her apartment, Akane tries her best to understand Yamada's lesson on broken hardware, but fails to have it sink in. In the meantime, Runa observes Yamada and Akane together. Finding the two cute, she snaps a picture and sends it to Ada, who asks Runa to help them get closer so they can have a happy romantic comedy ending. It turns out rom-com for middle schoolers means something entirely different, as Runa tries to force Akane into taking a shower so she can send Yamada to her bathroom, all while secretly hoping the two have a cliche lucky pervert moment like in a lot of anime. But when that plan flops, Runa pushes Akane in Yamada's lap, which turns into a disaster as Akane ends up whipping Yamada with her hair. While apologizing, Akane closes the gap between them, prompting Yamada to flee the scene. While running away from Akane's place, Yamada stops by a convenience store to buy a drink when a female cashier tries to ask him out. He doesn't know what she means, but he isn't interested. Noticing the sadness on the woman's face, Yamada begins to wonder why she's upset. It turns out, Yamada isn't the cold-hearted guy that everyone perceives him to be. He's just emotionally unaware. Upon returning to Akane's apartment, Yamada finds the girl napping peacefully. Not wanting to disturb them, Yamada begins to work quietly on Akane's computer. After staring at Kane, Yamada sneakily removes her hair clip and allows her hair to fall in its natural state. All of a sudden, the bell rings and as Yamada goes to open the door, he finds Takuma before him. Shocked to see his idol, Takuma fanboys all over Yamada and bombards him with questions, wondering why he's here. Once Yamada states that it's complicated to explain, Takuma composes himself and tells Yamada that he's come to return Akane's containers, revealing how she used to make him bento all the time. Takuma hands the bags to Yamada and tells him to inform Akane that the boxes just appeared out of nowhere. After Takuma leaves, Yamada finds Akane by the door. She thanks him for dealing with her ex as they make their way inside. Yamada then hands her the hair clip, revealing how he took it off. When asked why he did it, Yamada tells her that he doesn't know why. He just felt compelled to. The next day, Akane finds a part-time job at a convenience store. She calls Momo to inform her about the job, revealing how Ada gave her new parts for her computer and that she wishes to pay him back as soon as possible. Later that night, Akane joins the game and is greeted by Ruihime, who reveals that Komoda is their vice guild master. Meanwhile, at school, Yamada attracts the attention of a group of freshman girls while disposing of trash bags. Simultaneously, Akamoto, his classmate, invites him to join a school pageant, an offer Yamada has been consistently declining year after year. Amid casual banter about a future gaming session, Yamada's phone incessantly rings, leading him back to the classroom. There, he discovers Tsubaki, the class rep, had muffled the sound with a towel. Returning the towel, Yamada gets scolded by Tsubaki, who tells him that he's gotten sloppy in FPS games, blaming it on his newfound enjoyment in MMOs. Yamada defends himself, citing lag from an overseas server, but Tsubaki dismisses it as an excuse. Checking his phone, Yamada finds a guild announcement from Ada, instructing him to secure tickets for Tosei Academy's public culture festival. In the course of casual conversation, Yamada notices Akane is listed as the guild's sponsor among the attendees. During the culture festival, Akane arrives late at the meeting spot due to an overnight work call. Joined by Ada, Komodo, and Runa, they explore Tosei Academy. Runa, expressing anxiety about the upcoming entrance exam, discusses it as they part ways with Ada and Kamota, who head to the haunted house. Akane and Runa continue their stroll, but Runa excuses herself, explaining to Akane that she needs to use the restroom due to nervousness. As Akane waits outside, she receives a text from Ada about meeting in 15 minutes. She then finds herself wondering about Yamada when he suddenly appears before her. Noticing how busy he is, Akane decides to silently observe him until he walks inside his classroom. Meanwhile, Yamada excuses himself from Tsubaki to rendezvous with Akane near the restroom, revealing he saw her earlier but was occupied resolving class booth issues. Akane, feeling like a little girl, smiles knowing that Yamada finally noticed her. Later, Akane tells Yamada about Runa getting stomach pain due to nervousness, which prompts them to take Runa to an infirmary. 
As Runa notices Yamada updating Ada about her condition, she snatches his phone and begs Yamada to not inform Ada, expressing her desire to enjoy the festival. Understanding Runa's wishes, Akane decides to buy her food. With Yamada by her side, Akane finds all eyes on her, prompting her to walk ahead when all of a sudden, Yamada's PE teacher comes out of nowhere and pesters Yamada to join the beauty pageant. He stops mid-track and notices Akane and asks her what high school she goes to. As Akane reveals that she's a college student, Yamada's PE teacher reveals to the onlookers that Yamada's into older girls. Then all of a sudden, Yamada's fangirls bombard the two with various questions, causing them to run for their lives. After regrouping with Ada and Kamoda, Akane vents her frustration about Yamada's fangirls. In response, Ada tells Akane to just date Yamada. When he asks Yamada about his opinion on the matter, Yamada decides to play along by expressing his openness to the idea. Flustered by the joke, Akane runs off telling Ada that she hates him. Just as Ada's about to chase after her, Yamada rushes after Akane, something that Ada would have never expected. Noticing how Akane is headed for the stairs, Yamada stops Akane by calling her first name. After dragging Yamada to a more secluded area, Akane apologizes for reacting weirdly. Yamada then apologizes for the joke, but Akane assures him that she's not mad about it. With the issue resolved, Akane questions what he would have done if she took Ada's joke seriously. Yamada reveals that he would have considered it an honor, acknowledging she's out of his league. After a moment of shock for Akane, the two head out to buy food for Runa. As Yamada stops by the convenience store where Akane works, her colleagues ask Akane whether the two are dating. Akane quickly dismisses the idea which makes the woman ask if she is in love with Yamada. Unsure about how she feels for him, she tells her colleague that she's not really sure. As the two walk home together, Akane can't help but think about her confusing feelings for Yamada. After shrugging away the thoughts, Akane hands a homemade meal to Yamada as a thank you for fixing her computer. With problems related to the heart, the only solution is to turn to a friend, and that's exactly what Akane does by calling Momo over. As she rants about the younger guy that may or may not be into her, Momo hits her with an important question. Is she into Yamada? Before she could answer her, Akane gets a call from Runa who tells her to quickly meet her as the guild is facing a crisis. Upon arriving at the playground, Runa screams like a banshee, stating that they're getting yet another new member who just happens to be a woman. Venting out, Runa tells Akane that when they started the guild, they had decided to keep it close friends only. Once her worries turn into anger, she tells Akane that she has prepared a plan to drive the woman out. Sadly realizing that she's the adult in this situation, Akane consoles Runa by telling her that instead of going crazy on the poor woman, she could just open her heart out to the possibility of having a new friend. However, as Runa reveals that this new woman is an acquaintance of Yamada, Akane considers the possibility of a love rival. At school, Tsubaki thanks Yamada for letting her join the guild. Later, while walking home, Tsubaki notices Yamada getting a call from Akane. Once the conversation ends, she gets a little nosy and asks Yamada about Akane. After reflecting for a moment, he tells her he doesn't know how to answer her question. The next day, Runa tells Yamada that Akane is coming down with the flu. As Yamada goes to check up on her, he finds Akane outside, fallen by the bike area. He decides to pick her up and carries her home. While waiting for Yamada, Tsubaki finds his number busy and decides to make it back home with Akamoto. On their way home, Akamoto playfully teases her about how she's going to one day lose Yamada if she doesn't confess her feelings. Tsubaki then begins to cry because she understands that one of these days, Yamada will meet someone. A flashback to middle school shows Tsubaki approaching Yamada under the guise of learning gameplay from him. As time passed by, Tsubaki became slightly closer to Yamada. One day, Yamada revealed how in elementary school, he had a girl who liked him and got bullied because of it. Since they used to live close, the teachers would make him go to her house to give her handouts. Eventually, the girl asked Yamada to stay with her forever, but in response, Yamada told her he didn't know if that would be possible. Since then, the girl had stopped coming to school and eventually moved away. He told Tsubaki that he often thought about the girl and how he should have responded to her. After hearing Yamada's story of how he possibly gave the girl a lifelong trauma, Tsubaki realizes that she should have avoided Yamada at all costs, but instead, she ended up staying close and falling for him. In present, Yamada wraps Akane and brings her to the hospital. Once she regains consciousness, she finds Yamada by her side. 
At first, she thinks it's all a dream, but as Yamada explains everything to her, Akane ends up getting emotional because of his kindness. After calming down, she finds Yamada looking at her. At that moment, Akane realized that she finds comfort and safety in Yamada's presence. The following day, Momo arrives with basic groceries at Akane's apartment. As she learns that it was Yamada who brought Akane to the hospital, she asks if she had been dating behind her back. Akane insists that she and Yamada are just friends, which only causes Momo to look at her with more suspicion. As Akane goes to retrieve her wallet, Momo is left alone with her thoughts. Indeed a dangerous situation, she thinks about how it's not common for a guy to take care of a woman he doesn't fancy. but. Since she doesn't know Yamada well, it's hard to define the relationship. Similarly, Akane has just gotten her heart crushed and isn't sure if she's ready for love again. Later, Akane logs into FOS and finds Rurihime with a new guild member, Tsubaki. Almost instantly, Akane warms up to her and decides to show Tsubaki the ropes. As the two decide to bond over monster hunting, Akane and Tsubaki quickly realize that the threat is too big for them. In the meantime, Rurihime chills back and watches the girls struggle for their lives. In the end, the girls are unable to annihilate the monster. After deciding to end their gaming session, Akane and Tsubaki part ways for the time being. As Akane calls Yamada, Tsubaki tells Rurihime that she joined their guild for a selfish reason, but now she's not sure about what she wanted to achieve in the first place. After ending the call with Yamada, Akane tells Momo that she wants to meet with her. Arriving at the cafe, Akane asks Momo if she has any flaws regarding romance, when all of a sudden, two jerks from Momo's group date show up to pester her and Akane. Noticing the discomfort, the waiter arrives at the table when Akane recognizes the waiter to be Ada. As a friend and fellow guild member, Ada decides to help out Akane by swiftly dealing with the boys. With the shift over, Ada walks out of the cafe and finds Akane and Momo waiting for him. As Akane tells Ada that she has something to tell him, the group decides to head to the nearest park. Minutes pass by as Akane fumbles hard with her words. In the end, Momo gets tired of all the buildup and tells Ada that Akane is in love with someone. Knowing exactly who it is, Ada thinks back to the first time he met Akane in the game, looking all battered. As Ada applauds Akane for moving on, Momo speaks once again, revealing how Akane is still pondering over why she got dumped by Takuma. Akane finally tells the two that since they've been there for her when she got dumped, she wants to talk to them about the person she's in love with now. Smiling slightly, Ada tells Akane that the person she's in love with is a kind-hearted guy. Continuing on, Ada says that while that someone can come across as somewhat insensitive, in truth, he has a big heart, which allows him to be authentic. With that, Momo and Ada both push Akane to confess, assuring her that they'll be here for her regardless of whatever happens. As Akane decides to give it a go, Momo seizes the opportunity to shoot her shot by telling Ada that she's looking for a husband if he's single. While making her way to Yamada, Akane thinks about all those times her heart flustered and she refused to accept that she was in love with him. As she arrives at Yamada's apartment, she tries to confess but ends up chickening out. Yamada tells her that he's late for cram school and asks Akane to talk to him while on the way to the station. As the two head to his train, Akane finds herself getting cold feet. In the end, Yamada tells Akane that if it's something important, she can call him after class. Once the classes end, Yamada walks home with Tsubaki due to a heavy rain shower. Noticing how Tsubaki is getting wet, Yamada hands her the umbrella and decides to make her run for it. This time, Tsubaki chases after Yamada to confess her feelings. She then pleads with Yamada to think about her, just for a day. The next day, Yamada finds Akane and apologizes for not being able to talk to her yesterday. Noticing Yamada's lack of energy, Akane tells him to cheer up. She then gives him a pep talk by telling him how he's such an amazing friend to everyone. The following night, Tsubaki tells Yamada about how she has liked him a lot, and while she knows she'll get rejected, she expresses her relief about over not having to pretend anymore. After listening to her, Yamada tells Tsubaki that he can't reciprocate her feelings, when Tsubaki notices a drawing on Yamada's hand. Knowing that it's a drawing by Akane, Tsubaki tells Yamada that she knows the person who drew it, calling it the person he likes. For the first time, Yamada doesn't deny his feelings for Akane, yet despite knowing everything, Tsubaki cries and thanks Yamada for making time for her. In the meantime, Akane gets ready to meet the guild members at a barbecue restaurant. Turns out that old man Kamota is actually rich and well known, as everyone in the restaurant notices him and comes to greet him. During the meetup, Akane gets drunk and acts stupidly. When Yamada arrives, Ada forces him to look after her. During their walk home, Yamada holds Akane's hand, afraid to let her go. Upon arriving at Akane's place, Akane asks Yamada whether he likes her. Smiling, Yamada tells Akane that he has feelings for her. Afraid that it's all a dream, Akane asks if she could call him, 
This causes Yamada to hug Akane, as he assures her that he would be calling her in the morning. The next morning, Yamada calls Akane as promised. With that begins Akane and Yamada's love story. Watch this next video. It's me, Comfy T. I'll see you all in the next one.